Today we are beginning a new worship series entitled Everyday Holy. For the next several Sundays, we will consider a typical day in our lives, from waking up to falling asleep and everything in between. And my hope is that by reflecting on our everyday patterns, we might see just how extraordinary, just how holy our everyday lives are. Now, one of the most dug in Christian fallacies is the idea that there is any part of our lives that is secular, unaffected, and disconnected from God. But don't we make that sacred, secular distinction all the time? For example, the church sanctuary is of more value to God than is the church parking lot. The pastor is closer to God than is the custodian. The time we spend reading the Bible is of more importance to God than is the time we spend cooking a meal or sitting at our desks. But sound Christian doctrine corrects this false dichotomy. The doctrine of incarnation reminds us that all of everyday life holds value. The doctrine of incarnation teaches us that the word became flesh, real human flesh. And just like all of us who are in the flesh, the word woke up and went to work. The word lived among family and friends. The word got tired and needed food and rest. And the word got up the next day and did it all over again. All of Jesus' life, even the most ordinary of moments, was infused with God. And every moment of our life is God-infused too. And this belief is not only amazing, it can also be life-changing. If we want life to have meaning, if we want direction, wholeness, purpose, and delight, we seek these things by starting where we are. We look for the holy in every moment of every day. And how do we begin every day? By waking up. And Jesus' baptism reminds us just how holy this first moment of the day really is. So listen now to a reading from Mark 1, verses 9 through 11. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Waking up, that's how we begin every day. Soon after we get out of bed, we get dressed in our identities, parent, student, business person, volunteer, caretaker, citizen, but when we first wake up with messy hair and bad breath, we are nothing more and nothing less than human. Unimpressive, vulnerable, groggy, newly born into a new day. When God declares at Jesus' baptism, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased, Jesus hasn't yet done anything impressive. 
It would make a whole lot more sense if God's pronouncement came after Jesus did something awesome, like feed the 5,000 or raise Lazarus from the dead. But he has yet to perform a miracle or heal the sick. Up to this point, the only events that scripture shares are a couple of stories about Jesus' infancy and baptism, infancy and childhood. His life is so ordinary that the Bible doesn't even bother to record it until we find him a grown man on the banks of the Jordan. As he waits to be baptized by John, Jesus is just like every other person waiting to be baptized that day. But when he comes up from the water, the heavens are torn apart and God's spirit shows up. And the deep mystery of the Christian faith rings through the air. This is God's child. This is the beloved with whom God is well pleased. And with these words, Jesus is sent out. Every act he does, every word he says, flowing from his identity as beloved. He loves others. He heals others. He preaches, teaches, and redeems not to gain God's approval, but because of God's approval. And the same is true of our lives, too. Now, here in the Presbyterian Church, we baptize infants. Before they can understand the great story of faith, before they can recite the Lord's Prayer, before they can sit up or use the bathroom or contribute to the good of the world, grace is spoken over them. They are named as God's beloved before they have anything to show for themselves. And even if we do have something to show for ourselves, that we live a life of generosity and service to God, that we seek justice and wholeness for our neighbor, our core identity as beloved is still not based on our efforts. It doesn't matter if we know it or if we doubt it. Even if we can't yet confess it, live it, or claim it for ourselves, we are beloved. This is God's gift to us, and there are no strings attached. So as Christians, we are not defined by our activities or our abilities. We're not defined by our marital status or our job title or even our political party. From that first moment of waking up, we are marked by an identity that we are given by God. An identity that is more important and more real than any other identity we put on that day. So before we begin the tasks of every day, the cooking, the emailing, the caretaking, the dog walking, and finally the resting, we begin as God's beloved and everything else flows from that gift. But I think this reality can fade from our psyches pretty quickly. Days and weeks can go by in a burst of busyness, impatience, and distraction. Months and years can go by when we work on building up our own blessedness, when we strive for self-made belovedness. But no matter how we spend our regular days, no matter how good we are, our actions are not what make us beloved. The reality underlying every practice in our life is God's mercy, God's abundance, 
God's generosity and initiative and God's pleasure. Every morning, in simply being God's groggy beloved, we again receive grace and life and faith as a gift. So I'd like to leave us this morning with a little morning prayer that might serve as a reminder of this extraordinary truth. You might want to start a new prayer practice and say it every day before you roll out of bed. Keep at it and see how it might change your perspective on living an everyday holy life. The prayer goes like this. As I begin this day, help me remember that I am your beloved. So let's try it together. Why don't you repeat after me? As I begin this day, try it. As I begin this day, help me remember, help me remember that I am your beloved, that I am your beloved. Do you think you've got it? Let's try it together and see if we can make this our daily morning prayer. As I begin this day, help me remember that I am your beloved. Friends, every day is holy. When you wake up tomorrow and set about the tasks of your day, may you remember and digest and live out the truth that you are God's beloved. Amen.